Then we're gonna show you how to, how to add two, two vectors vector in six ways. I'll, All right. I'll do two ways. I'll do two and ways. I'll do two ways. All right, Are so you sure about that? Yeah. All right. Okay. So two vectors, three plus three, is gonna give us a maximum of six. six. Wait, a and maximum three? of six? Yeah. Hold up, hold up. But I thought three plus three is always six. Mm, uh, scalar addition, yes. Okay. But we're gonna do vector addition. 3 plus 3 can be 0 or can be anything between 0 and 6. Okay, Make the go. important distinction right. between scalar and vector addition. The resultant or their sum. Uh, so. No, I'll come in after this. So how do we find their sum? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add their components. What do you want to use? Trigonometry? Yep. So here we have vector A. You can split it into, let me make the branching a little bit shorter. A X and A Y. A X is going to be three cosine zero because the angle between it and the horizontal is zero. So that's going to be three. And by the way, remember, whether you use cosine or sine depends on if the angle is opposite or adjacent to your side. Okay, and A Y because the angle of zero, even though there is no angle here, is opposite to the y component, we would use three sine zero. Even though that gives us, since sine zero is zero, zero. That's a lot of zeros. And then we have b. So b would be bx, which is gonna be three cosine, because uh, the x component is adjacent to the angle 30 and since a cosine 30 is about 0.866 i'm gonna beep it boop it in my head and since 3 times 0 0.9 is 2.7 3 times 0.866 would be 2.6 and then we have by which is 3 sine 30 and i'm pretty sure that's one half giving us 1.5 so now to find the resultant x component, we just add a of x plus b of x. And what's that? 3 plus 2.6 is 5.6. Then the resultant y component is uh, ay plus by. 0 plus 1.5 is just 1.5. And of course, the resultant using the Pythagorean theorem is the square root of the resultant squared the resultant to x component squared plus the resultant to y component squared. Using the calculator, you get 5.8. So I'm going to uh, use the law of signs yeah, to figure out side. the resultant. So this one is 3, this one is 3, and this one is 30. So, and we want to find... Uh, the sum, mister. This one, right? This one, yeah, So of course. this angle right here has to be 150. And so what do we know? We know that this is 3, this is 3, and this is 150. We want to know this side. So law of sines says that uh, A over sine of A is equal to B over sine of B. Why don't you write the angles with capital letters? Because it's to make them more distinguishable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now what do we know? We know these two sides, and we want to figure out this last side. Yeah. So we know the angle opposite this last side is 150. So let's call this one, we can call this one A. So A over sine of 150 Wait. A? Oh, is equal to. Is this A? Can yeah, you let, point out sure. what side? Let's is call this one A, let's call this one B, let's call this one C. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, um, let's call this one A. Yeah. And so B can be either one of these. Uh, well, three. given the definition he was given, it's probably this one. Okay, sure. sure. B over sine B. But there's a problem. We don't know what B is. Until you see that this is an isosceles triangle, right? Because so it's part of a parallelogram. You, you know that these two angles have to be equal. So they have to be 15 degrees each. And you can some check algebra. that that adds up to 180. Right. Right. So now we replace this B by 15 because this 3 is opposite 15. So now we can just solve. A is 5.8 if you solve. Uh, A is 3 
sine 150 over sine of 15 which is 5.8 if you put it into the calculator all right which a lot of don't go here la logram all right so this is 3 uh, this is 3 of course this is vector a this is 30 degrees so this is also 3 this is vector b so let's draw vector b over here this looks too big let's draw vector b over here uh, this is a this is b so let's draw vector uh, b over here and let's draw vector a over here all right uh, okay so now if this is 150 this has to be 30 right well, it's defined to be 30 in the problem, so. All right, okay. Um, all right, so now we're going to R squared is equal to A squared plus B squared plus 2AB cosine theta. So R squared is equal to 3 squared plus 3 squared plus 2, 3, 3 cosine 30. So R squared is equal to 9 plus 9 plus 18 cosine 30 is uh 0.86 sorry 7 whatever it is so r is 5.8 of course Man. all right Wait, now, how is plus how is on 18 plus a positive number 5.8 you think that's the root oh you take his credit okay all right that's uh that was not dumb question no question is a dumb question okay so this time no i'm using the law of cosines and uh, if you don't know the uh, this equation is equal to c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta now what cosine is defined to mean can switch us between law of parallelograms and the law of cosines so for example let's draw our diagram here oh no that looks a bit too long so A is 3, that looks weird, and B is 3, and there's a 30 degree angle. Okay, we all know that, right? Mm -hmm. And as we've discussed many times in the past three ways, this angle is 150 degrees. So, uh, here we use this 30 degree angle, but here we use this 150 degree angle. Why? Well, wait, what? Shouldn't this be? Oh, yeah. Why? Well, because in the co law of cosines, we use this angle because it is opposite to what we want to find in this triangle. But. Also, there is the other reason. We use angle between the two sides that is stated here. No, that's for the law of sine. Parallel. That's for the law of cosine as well. If this mm -hmm. is A, this is B. The angle has to be between A and B. Oh, now that I think about it, that yeah. makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so here we use 150 degrees and here we use 30 degrees. Keep that in mind. Yeah. We use the smaller angle in law of parallelograms and the bigger one in law of cosines. Okay, phew. So now we know that C squared is equal to A squared and B squared can be acknowledged as the same thing. Mm -hmm considering that both mm. of them are equal to 3. So we have 2 times a squared, and 3 squared is 9, so we have 2 times 9. Those is small thing, you can you don't have to explain. Minus, well, still explain. A, t uh, a squared is 9, so 2 times 9, cosine 150. So c squared equals 18 minus 18 cosine 150, and cosine 150 is negative uh, one half. No, ne not ne yeah. negative point eight six eight yeah. seven. Thank you. Eighteen times minus point eight seven. <clears throat> and as you can see, it gives us the same resu results over here as what happened up there. This is about thirty five. I'm not going to take up too much space. So this is uh, 3, this is vector A, and this is, of course, uh, 3. Uh, this is uh, vector B. So this is the Bx 
uh, and this is the by and of course this is 30 all right so that what we i'm going to erase this one uh, eventually so uh, that, that this is what we have so if this is 30 this must be 60 uh, so what we are looking at we are looking at this is uh, of course 90 so 2x is equal to 3 so x is equal to 1.5 and this is x root 3, 1.5 root 3, 2.6. And this is x equal to 1.5. Okay, now we are almost done. So I can erase the geometry over here to do the business over here. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. So now uh, let's add the let's add the compo component. And that is uh, a, this is a, and this is bx. This is bx. And this is uh, by. All right. A plus bx is a is three. Bx is two point six. So five point six is that right? Mm -hmm. And by is of course uh, one point five. So this is resultant, and this has to be five point six square plus one point five square, and that has to be five point eight. And this is geometry. We have our two vectors, uh, three and three. So uh, we're going to try to add these Either, using. Instead of over here, I can show all the methods. Okay, this is an opportunity to show them all the methods. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we're going to add up our two vectors using uh, exponential notation. We can express each of these vectors as a e to the i theta where a is the size of the vector and theta is how much it's rotated. So for the first vector, the amplitude is just 3 uh, and theta is just 0. And for the second vector, our amplitude is also 3, but theta is in this case 30 degrees. And in radians, that works out to be pi over 6. So we're going to put pi over 6 here. Are you for yeah, and for this, you need to uh, recall that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta, okay? So now we can add these up as usual. So 3 e to the i 0, uh, anything to the 0th power is just 1, so this is just 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 3 times, this is going to be cosine pi over 6, plus i sine pi over 6. Can't so, can't yes. So now we're, this is the real component of our answer. And this is the imaginary component of our answer. Now, if we plot this in the real imaginary plane, Re on the x-axis and I am on the y-axis, this is our point on the x-axis. I don't know, maybe somewhere here. And this is our point somewhere on the y-axis. So we have this complex vector. And to find the magnitude of this complex vector, all we have to do is find its modulus. So we're going to take this, just like you find the magnitude of a regular vector, we're going to find the magnitude of this imaginary vector. So 3 plus 3 cosine, well, what is cosine pi over 6? That should be easy. Cosine pi over 6. It, it is. So whatever that is. So you can plug that in. So magnitude of the x component squared plus magnitude of the y component squared. Uh, okay. Yeah. And now you can see that the i doesn't matter anymore because after you square it, it becomes negative 1. It will take some away from here. And we'll end up with 5. Seven to 8 is the distance formula, which is pretty easy. So what we do is we draw these, and let's use the head-to-tail method here. So what is this point here? Let's say it's 0, 0. Then because this is A, and the magnitude of A is 3 in the x direction, this point where the tail, the tail of B meets the head of A would be 3, 0. And then B has a, an x component of 2.6 and a y component of 1.5. So this is going to be 5.6 comma 1.5. Then we use the distance formula. 
which says that the distance from this point to this point can be found with this equation. The square root of y2 minus y1, y2 is 1.5, y1 is 0, so 1.5 squared, plus x2 minus x1 squared, x2 minus x1 squared. And as you can see, that gives us the same yield as the first method, or 5.8. So why are there so many seven ways that already exist that prove that 3 plus 3 is 